Hello there guys and welcome to my first Football Manager 2020 video on the channel and today what we've done is put Pochettino as the Man United manager because right now he is one of the hottest managers to possibly take over at Manchester United so we thought you know what we'll use FM the newest version this year and we'll put him in and see how he does in terms of FM and like I say we'll see him into the future and see which results he gets, transfers he brings in and controversially does he get sacked as the Manchester United manager as previous managers have. So, like I say, first things I've done is put him as the manager at Man United, you can see here from the news article. One thing I've also done is put Mourinho at Tottenham, just to make it a bit more realistic. And also the other thing I did was sack Emery from Arsenal to see which other manager they would bring in as well. So before we go on, if you enjoyed today's video, guys, don't forget, leave a like down below and hit the subscribe button, uh, as that would really help me out. So one thing we'll do first, quickly, before we do go on and see him into the seasons ahead, is they give him a five-year contract at Manchester United, you can see here, to 2024. Because I didn't want to see him get sacked after the first season or anything like that. I want to give him the contract that he'll most likely get in real life. Don't know about in terms of money, but in terms of the contract length, I'm pretty sure he'll get a five-year deal, or if not four or five years, anyway. So, like I said, I put him in charge of Man United for five years. You can see his reputation is four and a half stars, more or less, there. You see what he tends to do. Uh, use offside trap, looks for the overlap, plays out of defence, tends not to... You know, use zone or marking for set pieces, so on and so forth. So, this is what he tends to do and not to do. We put him in charge of United. And one thing I've also done is I disabled the first uh, transfer window because I didn't really want him to go ahead and buy loads of players. I wanted to see how he would do with the players United have right now. So, we all know the players that United have got. We'll have a quick look at the schedule before we go on and, like I say, sim a year ahead. So, this is their schedule right now. They're going to obviously start with some preseason games. And then they've got Burnley, Bournemouth, Aston Villa and Norwich being their first four games in the Premier League. So it'll be interesting to see how he gets on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sim season by season. I was going to do two seasons at a time, but I didn't know how we would get on at United. So we're going to do sim a season, review it, sim a season, review it, so on and so, so, on and so forth. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead, sim this and I'll meet up with you guys at the end of the season. So then guys, we're back now after a year sims. As you can see, we're at Pochettino's page. He's still in charge at Manchester United. So let's have a see where he finished, how he did, and what signings he brought in as well. And like I say, all the competitions as well. So let's have a see. Let's click on Manchester United here. So you can see they finished sixth in the Premier League. So let's have a see how they did compared to the other teams in the league. So Manchester City coming up top. Equal on points there with Tottenham, but obviously going through more on the goal difference. Liverpool in third, Arsenal in fourth, uh, Chelsea in fifth, Man United in sixth. Bournemouth in 7th, so we can see down here Watford 20th, Leicester in 19th, which is a bit of a surprise, Norwich there on 18th as well, so who's in charge at Leicester at the moment, considering they've got relegated, so Brendan Rodgers has left, uh, who's also in charge at Arsenal, so Patrick Vieira took over from Emery, I do believe, but more importantly, let's have a look at Manchester United and how Pochino did, so, see, here's his starting 11 that he mainly used throughout the whole season, a uh, new strike here brought in from Celtic by, by the looks of it. And he had 12 goals and 4 assists in his 23 appearances for the club. You got Rashford on the left there starting and Lingard and Cam Martial on the right. So let's have a see uh, at the schedule and how they did and how they started in the league. So, well, you can see pre-season here. They beat Bayern 2-1. They ended up losing the game after though to Milan 2-1 to them. Um, but in terms of starting off the lead, started off to a win, 3-1 against Burnley. We ended up losing there to Bournemouth, 2-1, and then 4-0 to Aston Villa. But you can see here there's a lot of wins here. Well, they went on quite an unbeaten run here. Let's have a see how long does it go on for. Okay, so it goes all the way down to the 12th of December when they got their last win on this unbeaten run. Which is pretty mad, to be fair, considering how long they went on an unbeaten run for. You can see them in Carabao Cup here as well, in the Europa League. And uh, we're going to see how they did in all these. So let's have a see. You can see here now, actually, uh, they ended up losing to Tottenham in the Carabao Cup quarterfinals, 2-0. Son there getting the first goal, well, yeah, the first goal for Tottenham. So they ended up getting out the Carabao Cup quite late into it, into the quarterfinals. Carry on scrolling down here and see how they did in the FA Cup as well. So they got through to the third round, fourth round replay against Black, uh, Blackburn. Uh, fifth round, they ended up beating Chelsea 1-0. Um, and then see how far else they got here. So let's have a see. So they ended up losing, sorry, here to Bournemouth in the quarterfinal on penalties. 
which is a bit of a surprise, really. Bournemouth knocking them out. But they did finish seventh this season, so they didn't look like they had a bad season at all. So they ended up getting knocked out of the Carabao Cup by Tottenham, knocked out of the FA Cup by Bournemouth. So how did you do in the Europa League? So see here, they ended up going through here, they ended up going through here in the Europa League, and then here against Lille, they ended up going through the quarterfinals. Then the semi-finals, they ended up going through here as well. Uh, against Porto so into the final they ended up losing against Roma 2-0 in the Europa League final unfortunately not being able to win that either so all cup competitions ended up getting knocked out of then the Premier League they ended up getting only six well, when I say only six it was a pretty decent first season considering they only had the January transfer window to strengthen and see some other teams you know surprisingly Tottenham in second with a full season with uh, Mourinho in charge Obviously, Leicester going down. So, it was quite the season. No team ended up getting 100 points like, like last season with Manchester City. Uh, let's have a little look at transfer hit history. Did he bring in any other players apart from this striker here? Uh, brought in another player here for 9 million. Uh, no other players really going out on big amounts of money. You can see here, just Lukaku that already went out. 56 million. Uh, Rojo going out there as well. So, no... Major signings, but maybe next season with having the summer transfer window, we might see more signings, more bigger signings as well. Uh, have a quick look at this striker we brought here in from uh, Celtic. 22 years of age, not a bad little player to be fair. 16 work rate, 17 finishing, 16 dribbling. Uh, only 22 years of age, so maybe they'll keep him up front or maybe they'll decide to strengthen next season. We'll have to have a see. But anyway, I'm going to sim another season with him in charge and see how he gets on. So then guys, we are back after Season 2 has been simmed and here we are on Pochettino's page. He's still in charge of Manchester United. Let's have a look how he did this second season around. Now he's had a full summer transfer window and like I say, it's time to reevaluate the whole squad. Now he is definitely in charge for at least two seasons. So let's go in. Man United, they finished third in the Premier League. Interesting to see Harry Maguire captain of the team. And the starting 11 has changed a little bit as well. You can see Martial up front now. Um, the, top, the player designed last season starting out on the right, Tielemans in CDM. So let's have a quick look first at the Premier League and see how it ended up with them finishing third. So Manchester City winning it on 91 points, Liverpool coming second this year on 83. Man United coming in third on 76 points, only a point ahead of Chelsea. And then Bournemouth coming in fifth, Tottenham coming in sixth and Arsenal coming in seventh. So... Pretty interesting to see Manchester City wing it again. But more importantly, Man United last season finishing in sixth and then this season finishing in third, which obviously means that it's been a much better season this time around for Pochettino as the manager of Manchester United. So let's have a see everything else that he has done this season in charge. So I think first things we'll do is have a look at the schedule, see how we started off the season, which sort of competitions he won or didn't win, and then we'll go on to transfers and then have a look at some other things as well. So if we go on to the schedule here... Uh, let's scroll back up to the top. So, pre-season tournament, not tournament, sorry, I'm so used to FIFA. Pre-season, uh, let's have a see. So, pre-season went well. They went unbeaten. Some good wins there. Into, into, bloody hell, into, into Miami there, winning them. Orlando City, Bayern, draw against them. Milan this time around, winning that game. Uh, Lille, which was a draw. Start to the Premier League, Cardiff, 4-0 win. West Ham, 3-1 win. Aston Villa, 1-0 win. A draw against Liverpool. So, like I say, start in the Premier League, much better this time round. Didn't look like they had a much of an unbeaten run. Okay, maybe I speak too soon. Uh, obviously, they lost here to Brighton, 1-0, unfortunately. Lost here to Chelsea, 2-0. And uh, drew here, but obviously lost on penalties to Newcastle. Unfortunately, the Carabao Cup quarter-final, which I'm sure that's the sort of stage they went out last season in, in the quarter-final. So, unfortunately, unable to get through in that. So... Let's have a see how they did in the FA Cup. So, obviously, they made it through to the third round. So, the fourth round of the FA Cup, then up losing to Bournemouth. Adam Ola Luckman there for Bournemouth, scoring two goals, knocking Manchester United out of the FA Cup. So, unfortunately, out of the Carabao Cup, second season, and out of the FA Cup. So, let's have a see how they did in the Europa League. So, here they are in the first knockout round against PSV. They ended up going through. Uh, the second knockout round here against Lille ended up going through in that as well. And then in the final, quarter-final, sorry, of the uh, Europa League, ended up winning against Napoli there as well to get through into the semi-final against Sporting, which they ended up going through as well. You can see they had got a 2-2 draw 
And then they won 2-1 there. Mason Greenwood and Tielemans getting the goals. So obviously this means they made it into the final. So if we scroll down here. And they actually won the final against Moscow. Locomotive Moscow. 2-0. Uh, Rashford and uh, I'm going to try and pronounce this guy's name. Eduardo maybe. Eduardo. Uh, getting a 2-0 win there in the Europa League final. So it looks as if Pochettino has done loads, loads, loads better this time round in the Manchester United manager's spots. Ended up getting third in the Premier League, ended up winning the Europa League, unfortunately getting knocked out of the FA Cup and the Carabao Cup, but more importantly, you got the Europa League win. 2 0 win there, you can see. So let's have a see which sort of transfers he brought in this season to hopefully, uh, well, not hopefully, sorry, help bring on this success he did. So he brought Tielemans in for 60 million there. Uh, Van der Beek here from Ajax for 43.5 million. And obviously a few other players there, Flasic as well. Uh, 35.5 million, interesting transfer there. Ruben Loftus Cheek for 30 million. Uh, he brought in Everton here as well for 23, 23 million. Quadrado, he brought him in on a free from Juventus, interesting signing. Uh, players out, as you'll notice. Pogba has gone to PSG for 89 million, a lot of money there. Uh, Luke Shaw gone as well to Marseille for 25 million. Scott McTominay has gone out for 16.75 million. Fred as well. So, as much as he brought players in, a lot of players have gone out as well. Obviously, mainly on loan and on the free. But, some big players have left, as you can see. Pogba, Luke Shaw, McTominay, you know, one of their, you know, future young kids coming through has gone. Fred as well. Uh, Twan Mata has gone as well. So, some, some decent signings there. Bringing in, like I say, Tielemans as well would have helped them. And obviously, all these other signings here as well. So, have a quick look here at the landmarks as well. We didn't really look at this. Uh, last season so because I didn't think there'd be any landmarks and as you can see there isn't really uh, they come runners up last year in the Europa League as you can see Harry Maguire got appointed as captain uh, at the start of this second season and then you ended up winning obviously the Europa League here this season so let's have a quick look at the players who scored the most goals for them this season as you can see there it is Eduardo their season uh, their season their player they brought in last season 26 goals and 19 assists he's proven to be a really good player for them so far, second is Mason Greenwood there on 16 goals and 7 assists. And then just behind him, Marcus Rashford on 16 goals and 6 assists. So, Mason Greenwood making quite the impression right now for Pochettino. Not looking a bad little player there himself. Valued at 67 million at 19 years of age. So, like I say, not a bad little player as well. Uh, Marcus Rashford, what's he looking at now? So, he's valued at 60 million at 23 years old. Obviously, some amazing stats here. 18 acceleration. 16 determination, 18 flair, 16 penalty taking, uh, 16 dribbling. Like I said, I could be here all day going through them all. But obviously, a really, really good player. And uh, like I say, not a bad little team he's got going on here right now at Manchester United. And uh, like I say, to finish third in his second season, a great feat. And like I say, what can he do in his third season? Is he still under uh, the contract we've given him? And he still is under this contract. They haven't given him a new contract just yet. But he's doing well so far for Manchester United. So what we're going to do is going to leave that here for this episode. We're going to go into a part two and see how he does in the upcoming seasons. Like I say, we'll sim it three, four more seasons. However long he's still in charge at Manchester United for. And maybe he can just help him win the Premier League again. But anyway, guys, if you've enjoyed today's episode, don't forget, leave a like down below. Leave a comment, any other, you know, like... Uh, test or experiment you want me to do on FM, other managers in roles of other teams, do let me know down below in the comment section. Like I say, hit the subscribe button and I'll see you all next time.